teeth. What are, what are you doing? <laughs> How cool is this? Hi everybody. How's everybody doing today? That's a big old wing. And if you read our intro, you know it has, has something to do with our story today. The vital role of the vulture. How exciting. We get this, we get to meet one. How oh, cool. Like, like real close, Steve. I know. Like well, really depends how good close. you are with the camera today. I don't know. I hope I ate my enough Wheaties this morning. <laughs> How's everybody doing out there? We missed you last Monday. We missed you, but I hope you guys had an amazing Labor Day. I know we did. And some of you tuned in to watch our silly little antics again, which is always fun to share. Did anybody go to YouTube? If you went to YouTube, give us a thumbs up or a heart or something. If you went over to YouTube to check out some of those channels, if you have, or some of the um, programs that are on YouTube. Oh, we're getting some hearts and thumbs oh, up. Oh, we did. Yay. Fantastic. Good deal. That's so exciting. And there's so many different types of programs on the YouTube channels. A lot of the adventures and education are there as well. I have to say, I did my first adventure in education. I did my first zoo classroom last Wednesday. That team's amazing. That yeah, is. You did a good job. Whew, oh, thank you very much. Those guys are working hard to present those zoo classroom programs. It was really a great time to be able to do that. Uh, a couple things before we get started. Uh, next week's ep next or this Wednesday's episode is taped. It's all about the Hellbender, and we'll tell you more about that in a little bit. So Wednesday is taped. Um, the donation box is up. So if you have it in you and you want to give a little money, you can. Oh, we're Brenda just donated. Thank you, Brenda. Holy cow, Brenda, that's amazing. We just we just cracked four thousand dollars since the middle of June last month or last week. It's a crazy how much you guys have helped out. So the donation box is there, and today well, it's we a special are. Week I was getting ready to say yeah. thank you for that. We're getting ready to dive into Saving Species Week. How cool! At the zoo, we usually have on-site programs that are special events that are saving species North America, saving species Africa. Because of COVID, we went, you know what? Let's do something virtual so everybody can still see some of the amazing conservation work being done by your friends here at the North Carolina Zoo. So maybe this is the week. You go, well, you know what? It's important. So I'll donate some money to the conservation efforts here at the North Carolina Zoo. So the donation button is up and running. So if you would do feel inclined, please click that. And Brenda, thank you so much for being our first person to go into that. Uh, Wendy, is that all we had to talk about early? We did uh, the week, we did the donation, we did the thank you, yes. what happened. Yes. I think we're ready. Yes, we so have some fun people waiting for us. Bailey's, Bailey's waiting very patiently. I know. <laughs> Here's Keeper Bailey, guys. Say hi to Keeper Bailey. Hello, everybody. And I promise you right now, Bailey, I promise you. Yes. Some of you are waving to Bailey, right? <laughs> <laughs> and they will. They're waving. They're clapping for you or yes. something like that. Awesome. Keep clapping. <laughs> <laughs> it's Monday. We all need that. <laughs> Bailey deserves it. Bailey deserves it. That is 100% for sure. So, Keeper Bailey. I'm calling. Sorry. <laughs> Always Sorry. have to monitor that radio. Part of the job. <laughs> <laughs> That's your job. It that is, is your job. Um, you are a keeper in the which section? The bird department. You are in the bird department. I am in the bird department. Um, does that bird department have anything to do with vulture? It does, actually. You do have you know, one? Vultures are birds, so they yes. They are? And we do have a vulture in our and We learned that the real defining characteristic of a bird is feathers. Not flight. Mm. Not a beak. Nope. Not sharp feet. Not nope. eggs. Not eggs. It's feathers. It is. How cool yeah. is that? Did you know that? I, I did know that. <laughs> I should know that. <laughs> so, she, she's showing off a little bit now, isn't she? <laughs> you guys have known that we've got to meet a lot of folks lately, and we've got to play and have some good times. Um, Bailey used to be in the education department. I did. So, Long time ago. And we're ago. so proud of her for moving into a place that she's really passionate about in the birds and the training aspect of that. So which Bailey and I have a little bit of a different friendship as we move forward. So you might see a little <laughs> bit of that in, this, in today's episode. Bailey, I'll tell you what, why don't you okay. call our guest out? Okay, I think I can manage that. Hopefully I think you we'll can too. Goes. Let's see what happens here. All right, Bria, let's see if we can get our guest to come out and visit us today. Oh, yes. Are you kidding me? Oh, she's so sweet. This is, this is Ziggy, right? <laughs> this is Ziggy, yes. This is Ziggy, and she is our female black vulture. 
And Ziggy is the one on the right. Yeah, yeah, the one with the feathers. That's Ziggy. That's Ziggy. Okay, yeah. and the one on the left is Bria. That is Bria. <laughs> she is also a keeper in the bird department with me. Nice. Yep. So, so look at Ziggy bouncing around. <laughs> Ziggy's getting off to a little bit of a slow start. It's Monday. She's feeling a little lazy <gasps> today. Look at that flight. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah, so what Bria's just asking her to fly back and forth between the stumps so you guys can get a pretty good close look at those the nice flight, awesome. big broad feathers, yeah, yeah, things yeah. like that. So she's trying to get you guys, you know, a little close up view of some nice little flights for right now. Oh, you know what? I'm going to pick on that because she's. When Bria presents the food, she has her hand closed. She does. Yep, that's a good catch. And is that a behavior thing for Bri for Ziggy? It is. So Ziggy is a vulture, cool is um, and so I don't know what you guys know about vultures, but um, teach them. <laughs> they eat something <laughs> called carrion, which mm -hmm. is a nice fancy science word for dead stuff. Dead stuff. <laughs> and so <laughs> when they are eating the dead stuff, is usually carcasses, things like that. Wow. They'll stick their whole face inside and eat like that so if we wow. had our hand out flat for ziggy that's not really how she would naturally eat so we put so the food working for it a little bit yep we no hide the kidding. food inside of our hands and so you can see her sort of you know using that little bill and she's not biting she's not you know hurting brie at all she's just nibbling and pulling a little bitty bits of food out of her hand and that's wow. just the most natural way to feed her me oh look at that all the way over the other stump <laughs> Yeah, now she's showing off. She so likes to do her big tall stumps every now and Ziggy's again. Ziggy's fully flighted, obviously. She is. And we should have said, I don't, I think we got right into this. Ziggy is a black vulture. Correct, yes, black vulture. So in North Carolina, we have two different species. Right. Um, so the Ziggy black vulture is one of them, and the other one is the turkey vulture. Right, okay, and the turkey vulture has the red head. We're going to talk. Yes. We're going to do a little bit of that with you guys in a little bit. We're going to show you some of the differences between turkey vultures and black vultures. Look at that flight. That is crazy. <laughs> So yeah, Miss Ziggy, like you said earlier, she's fully flighted. Mm -hmm. um, she's kind of cool because we have had her in here with us for the past about six years, not quite six years. Okay. Um, so she's actually still pretty young. She's almost just getting out of being a juvenile. <laughs> she still sometimes will act like a baby. You'll see her begging for food and stuff like that All from right. us. Um, but she is fully flighted. We got her because she came into a wildlife center down in, uh, I think it was Florida. And oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so she's come a long way. She actually wasn't here in North Carolina. No kidding. And um, she wasn't injured or anything like that. She just was too used to people. Oh, so yeah. she That's would, a problem, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, if you got her as a chick, she, you know, as she got older, she would come to us looking for food instead of dead stuff in mm -hmm. the woods. So we got to um, get Ziggy and work with her and train her to do this kind of stuff so you guys get to see her up close. And you have definitely more than trained. You guys have done some <laughs> really cool stuff with Ziggy. This is amazing to see. Bria, nice job. <laughs> Ziggy, awesome job. So yeah, we, the way we work with Ziggy, um, it is something we call positive reinforcement, operant conditioning. So you see, you know, Bria cues her to go do something, she flies, she comes back, she gets food. Right. So every time she does something we ask, she gets food, nice reward. Um, I'm not sure if you guys know what she might eat other than dead stuff, what we would feed her at the zoo. What is that? So she that's, gets... Let's tell what we call Mises Pieces. Mises Pieces. <laughs> Mises Pieces. It's not as good as it sounds. Um, it's cut up mice and rats. It sounds great. Oh, wait. <laughs> right. No, it doesn't. Yeah, little tiny pieces of ma mice and rats. Sometimes she gets chick. You know, we give her bugs and things like that. But right now, Bria is working with um, mostly mice. Mises Pieces. Moment. Yes. Nice. <laughs> That's so interesting. Let's just go with that. <laughs> yeah. Fun fact That's of the day. So, okay, here's a keeper thing for you. Um, Bria can't mind having guts and gross stuff on her hands. I will tell you, Bria does not like having gross stuff on her hands. <laughs> it is one of the, <laughs> our least favorite parts of it. Um, but we do make sure that we wash our hands really thoroughly before. Sure. Um, we don't wear gloves and things like that. Yeah. Latex glove or nitrile glove. Because as she's picking and chewing, she could pick oh, she some could of that pick off. she could pick it. Nice. So, okay. Yeah. So we just we go without gloves just so that we make sure she's not ingesting something. So that a thing she you've got to be aware of when you're training and getting and getting prepped to train. Yep. Is well, how how do they feed? Some of that natural history comes into play with. How are you going to elicit these behaviors? How are you going to call these behaviors? What behaviors are you going to talk about exactly. with them? So that's really cool. So knowing, knowing the animals ahead of time is really important. Exactly. <laughs> I love See. the head. We got a question, Wendy? Um, I'm, it's my own question. Oh. Uh, oh. Why, why is she mantling or is what, what does she do? That so with her wings? wings like that? 
Um, like I said, she is still pretty young, and she is Listen imprinted, so she will keep those baby behaviors, like that kind yeah, of growling noise that you just saw. So when she has her wings down and kind of hunched forward, and kind of sometimes she'll flap them a little bit or pump her wings, it's a begging behavior. Oh. So she's like, all right, I'm excited. Where's my food? Like, okay, let's do this. And she also does it sometimes if she's, like, ready, if she's anticipating, she'll kind oh. of hunch down, too. Oh, okay. to it off. sort of reminded me of, like, a hawk does a mantle yeah. behavior to hide food. his food. So yeah. it's a little different. That's it is really a little cool. different. Like, she won't, you'll notice, like, with a hawk, they'll raise. <laughs> up those feathers on their neck and their yeah. head she's not really doing that she actually you know when she has those feathers on her neck um kind of puffed up that's actually kind of a baby behavior for them as well she's you know oh, she'll wow. raise like the feathers on the top of her head so she'll look less bald and it's ah. like it's once again it's more of a baby behavior for okay. these guests that's really let's talk about the bald real quick i know okay. that <laughs> ziggy's doing that's crazy cool <laughs> let's talk about the bald head real quick can okay. you show that bald head uh wendy yeah. it's really important it's not it just, is? it's just not what it is, right? It's some, there's something vitally important about having, if you're, if you're a vulture, it's vitally important to have a bald head. That's exactly right. And I think, so you guys, I'm glad you guys got a close look at that yeah. real quick. I think Miss Bria is going to be taking Ziggy back here in just a second to get her back into her sure. home space. Um, she's going to, are you going to say bye Ziggy? She's like, I'm ready to go. Let's go. <laughs> Ziggy knows where go is. <laughs> she does. She was like, I know exactly what we're doing. Um, Watch that flight. Oh, oh, that's so cool. So pretty. So the bald head is super important. Right. So um, like, you know, like we said, birds have feathers and you can see she's got feathers all over sure except on her legs and on her head mm -hmm. when they're actually real young and babies they have feathers covering all over their head so they would just be fluffy all the way over gotcha. as they get <laughs> <laughs> she loves that hot stuff Bye, <laughs> that is so cool like, oh, okay. that was a great job all right <laughs> um so she will um as they get older they lose those feathers on their head okay um and the reason they lose the feathers is because they're sticking their whole heads into carcasses like i said right so the best example we can think of if you're going to eat a plate of spaghetti right and i've got all this hair if i just put my face fir face first into a pile of spaghetti like a, a bird a vulture would do with the carcass i'm gonna have a mess i'm gonna be gross i'm gonna have germs and nastiness just let you know me. we have a we have some spaghetti over here <laughs> Well, you want to I, I think I think we, we might need to, need to pass. I, I think, I'm just kidding. No, I think we don't have time for that today. I'm not really sure. <laughs> um, so, yeah. so they lose that the feathers, and it goes further back on their head as they get older. So, um, you know, instead of being fed by parents, they're going out on their own looking for food. They'll lose those cool feathers, and it helps to keep them clean. Yeah, so imagine if you're putting your head into that carcass. Mm -hmm. If you had all those feathers, like Bailey was saying, yeah. all that gooky, that yucky, nasty... It's and it, then it begins to rot, and it smell, and it might bring bacteria, and it may be right and here. And insects. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, but yeah. having that Nate, that bald head, you put it in, but not that big mm -hmm. of a deal. What, what you got? We did have a question. Uh, Anna was asking why hey, the trainer had the, why uh, the trainer had the other hand behind her back. Um, one of the behaviors that Ziggy is actually cued to do, because that's a really good question. Nice observation, uh, Anna. Um, sometimes we'll have a glove on our other hand, um, and when she sees that glove, she'll actually fly to us. So she knows if she sees a glove present in what? front of us, she'll fly and land on that glove. If we don't want her to do that, we need to keep our hand behind her back, or else she's just going to come flying at us out of nowhere, <laughs> and that's not what we How want. How cool is that? So it's just setting her up for success, and that you know we're not make, we're not confusing her, and we're not putting ourselves in a weird position. That's a really good question, though. And Anything a vulture else? flies into your hand. <laughs> you don't have a glove on, Steve. I will tell you the, yeah, the very first. It's not going to happen. <laughs> the very first time it happens, it's pretty disconcerting. You have a very <laughs> large bird just coming at you. Right. <laughs> I imagine. It's like, here it is. Um, so turkey vultures. Yes. Changing gears a little bit for you guys. Turkey vultures. Changing gears. Mm -hmm. uh, native to North Carolina. They are. Yes. They're found here with the turkey. Or I'm sorry, the black vultures. Yes. Because Ziggy's a black vulture. Found here very social. They are. Yes. Very social. So most vultures in general are pretty social. Turkey vultures are as well. I'm sure you guys have seen vultures flying around, big groups of them. Sometimes you'll see like maybe two or three. Sometimes you can see hundreds of them. And we actually have one here, a pretty big, it's called a kettle. Um, it's a big, kettle, isn't that cute? A kettle. Vultures cuddle, isn't that cute? <laughs> a kettle, a, a kettle. like a pot. Oh. Like a pot. <laughs> Like oh, a witch's pot. And they're black, so it's like a pot calling a kettle black. Aha, uh -huh, there you go. <laughs> Woo, Monday, thank I mean, you. you were everyone. close, you were thank close. You. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> you're, 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 you get there. Host, remember, let the host, uh, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, so they're kettling, so they're kettling, kettling flying in the big circles. We actually have one here on Park. Um, we have a really huge compost site, and our vultures oh. love that. So <laughs> thank you, you'll see them flying around on Park. So yeah, you'll Neat. see huge groups 
um, and they use that to help look for food. So gotcha. turkey vultures have a really good sense of smell, yes. and the black vultures actually rely on that to find their food as well. That's so cool, and we're going to talk about that. It's so amazing. You're talk about that one is on, no, one is on, one kind of depends on the other. They do. Yep, yeah. they use um, each other to find their foods. Let's talk about the wing real quick, and yeah. then you guys, you, I know that you guys have some other things you need to oh, do. She but can if come we can, over and have yeah. a chat too. Oh, come on over, Bria. <laughs> can you come over for a second? Say hi. <laughs> so in flight. The turkey, the black vulture is more mm -hmm. two-toned. Mm -hmm. Kind of has the white down here, the lighter color down here, and the darker color up here. And I have a picture I'll show you with that in a sec. So a little lighter down here, a little darker up here in the black vulture. Yes. It's the ed, the tips. Oh, it's right here. Yeah, yeah the tips. You can see. So the black vulture has the, see, here we go. Black vulture up top, smaller. And so you have the white kind of on the tips, and the turkey vulture is a little more light Two-tone, all, tone, all the way across. Yep. So they almost have those wings, almost like fingers. Yes, not really, exactly. not really, but you can like see them at the end. It's fingertips, we'll say, feather-wise. That was amazing, Bria. Oh, thank you. That was really thank fun you. to see. That was really cool. <laughs> and it's hard to get all of us in this one little shot. Um, before we let you guys go, because I know you guys are busy, um, do you guys have anybody you would like to say hi to? Oh, hi On to? On Facebook, yeah. They, <laughs> they can watch it now, or they can watch it later. Yeah, you have, you have people. Yeah, you, have you have peeps? Um, I, my kids aren't on Facebook, I don't think. <laughs> I don't think. Yeah, show it to them later. Well, it's actually, an amazing work you I did. I do have a shout out um, because we have a wonderful mentor and somebody that uh, has really shaped our foundation to be successful with Ziggy. And that is the wonderful Fung Lu. Oh. Um, and shout he actually was instrumental in uh, getting us off the ground, so to speak. So uh, thank did you, Fung Did you really just you. say that? <laughs> did you really just go off the ground, Did you ever Bria? need a pun, ever. <laughs> This one. That's good to know. That's good to know. <laughs> so, Fung Lu, thank you very much for the work that you did with these guys. What about you, Bailey? You want to say hi to anybody? Um, I'm sure my mom's probably watching, so hi, Mom. <laughs> hi, Bailey's mom. That's awesome. That's cool. Um, just real, because you're with us now, um, and some of the training things that happen, give these guys an, an, just an idea of how smart a vulture is. Uh, She's definitely more intelligent than I am. Uh, she's in me. <laughs> she said they're more intelligent than herself. <laughs> and me. <laughs> and then Bailey and I combined. No, um, they actually lend themselves really well to doing things like this uh, because they are so intelligent. That's and so that's, cool. That's actually a challenge in, in, in working yes. with them is that Great we have point. to kind of be a couple steps ahead of them. How about that? Um, they can problem solve so quickly and put things together that, quite honestly, she makes our job a little bit easier in some ways because sometimes she ends up teaching to herself. Teach herself she behavior? I joke all the time. She's faster really? than I am. I'm slow motion. She's fast forward. She can almost teach herself a behavior because yes, she's that so quick on the thing. So Is that one reason you bounced her around so yes. much to keep her keep her moving? Yes. If she stays idle for too long, she finds a way to get herself into trouble. So, <laughs> we don't um, want a ziggy trouble. Yeah, we look, we look to keep her, you know, doing the correct behaviors. Um, nice. And that works really well for her and for us. And she is a, one of our superstar ambassador birds. Mm -hmm. so she's and she always really is. With our, with our guests. And five or six ish, you said it? Yeah, somewhere in there? around. She should be turning six this year. So six ish. So pretty yeah. smart, amazing bird. And so happy to have her here. And the work you guys are doing is really fun to be able to bring this really cool thing. We're going to tell you about why these guys are so important um, as these guys take Ziggy out. I'm going to move over so they can come through here okay. and tell you a little bit more about vultures in general. Okay. Bailey, Bria, thank you so very thank much. You. Um, and you guys didn't meet. There's somebody behind the scenes. You won't see her because she's just she's just really an amazing person. But Wendy is also here to make sure that Not everything. Me. Oh, the other Wendy. The other Wendy. Their yes. supervisor, Wendy Wadsworth. <laughs> so how cool is that? To think there's all this going on with this amazing species, this turkey, the, the black vulture, right here at the North Carolina Zoo. And you don't think about it very well because you see him, and you're like, yeah, what's well, a vulture? And then realizing there's two species, the black and the turkey. And we'll show you about some of those differences in a minute when they when they are able to come back through. We'll share some of those differences with you. Um, but if you start thinking about it, their behavior is really neat. It's very interesting in that when you start trying to tell the difference, you can see it. Here's the picture again. Thank you very much, Wendy. Whoops, I caught, her. I caught Wendy in the, in the cord. So look at this. Again, this is the black here with the wing tips. So guys, you can do this. You can become little um, ornithologists in the wild. You can become conservationist by beginning to identify animals and seeing the kind of behavior you're seeing. So the black vulture up here, this is the turkey vulture. Black vulture has a little bit of shorter tail as well. And the head, obviously, right? I mean, come on. 
And there's that bald head. And remember the importance of that. It's not just happenstance that it's bald. Over time, that's a wonderful advantage to the vulture. Turkey over here, black over here, and you can see it in the flight as well. And they do that kettling behavior. And I want you to think about that because it's really important. And you're going to see a map in a minute. Because I'm going to introduce you, kind of, to a really cool conservation program here. But they kettle over land. They can do those big circles over land because that's where the thermals set up. That's where those big, huge columns... Bye, guys! Bye, Ziggy! That's where those big columns of air rise into the atmosphere. They don't do that over water. Right? They don't do that over water. Those big pillars of air don't occur there. So they have to do it over land. I think that's neat. They have an amazing sense of smell. Are they the only bird that can smell, Steve? Well, because most birds cannot. Myth. Baby bird. Putting it in a nest. Totally safe. Most birds do not rely on their sense of smell. So if you found a baby bird on the ground and you know where the nest is, maybe you saw it, you, you can put it back up. Mom's not going to reject it. Vultures have an amazing sense of smell. Check this out. This is the skull of a vulture, a little smaller than mine. That hooked beak. Sometimes they're the first animals on a carcass. And they've got to tear into the carcass. So that hooked beak helps them do that. But look at these nares. Look at these, these nostrils. Look at these, these openings for a sense of smell. Vultures have an amazing sense of smell. The turkey vulture, the one with the red head, better sense of smell than the black vulture. Okay, so, big deal. Turkey vultures, often the first vulture on a carcass. Turkey vultures, the first vulture on a carcass, what do the black vultures do? They're followers, Steve. <laughs> they They're are. Followers. They're going to follow the, the turkey vulture. One on one, on a carcass, turkey vulture, bigger, stronger, a little more burly, chases off the black vulture. Not a problem. On a carcass, turkey vulture, flock of black vultures <laughs> run the turkey vulture off. So there's this dynamic that's going on you don't even think about. So when you pass a carcass on the, when you pass that dead animal on the, on the road, that carrion that's on the road, and it's a bunch of vultures, more than likely black vultures little smaller but you can flip it the black vulture is also a hunter what who knew who knew that I didn't until I learned it black vultures hunt turkey vultures with that amazing sense of smell exclusively carrion exclusively dead and decaying rotting giving off that smell, animals. So the turkey vulture is flying around, finds a dead animal, swoops down, eats what it can. About 25% of its body weight, 25% of its body weight. That's a lot. Can you imagine gorging on that? Yeah, that's a lot for a bird. So take your weight, divide it by four. <laughs> that's a lot of pizza. Woo, that'd be awesome. Could you imagine? I would be in a coma. 200 pound person, four goes into 25, 50, 50 pounds of food. <laughs> you would literally have to take a nap Could for you three imagine? Days. I can't even, can't even fathom that much food. And I can put some food away. I can put some food away, but not that. Mm -mm, that's crazy. But you have to when there's not a whole lot of food available to you sometimes, right? If you're finding food where it is, you better take advantage of it when you can. So turkey vultures and red vultures here in North Carolina, two different species of birds that you can see here. 
Buzzard, that's another word for vulture. Sometimes you'll hear buzzard, turkey buzzard, turkey vulture, same thing. So in the air, help me, who has the splayed out fingers and the tips? Who has the tips that are kind of whitish and feathery? Which one is this? We met one today. Which one is this with the feathered, the splayed out fingers and just the tips? We met Ziggy today. Ziggy was a black vulture. Black vulture. And if it's two-tone and looks bigger and has more of a wing V shape, this is harder for me to tell. So I look at this. Two-tone, that's your turkey vulture. How cool. This is Saving Species Week here at the North Carolina Zoo. And we are actively involved in conservation of vultures. They're in trouble. 95%, 95% decrease in vulture populations in many places across the world. That's a lot. Right? That's a huge number, Steve. So think you have 100 animal, you have 100 vultures, 95 are gone. That's 95%. In some populations across the world and we're going to talk about why that is devastating to the ecosystems in a second but the zoo is doing some really cool stuff I have some pictures to share with you because I can't go to Africa not yet anyway that wasn't in our budget for today <laughs> so we and by we I mean primarily Dr. Corinne Kendall um, one of our staff in North Carolina, she's in, the, she's in the Conservation Education and Science Department, one of our colleagues, does some amazing work. And they trap, they, they catch, not trap, catch vultures. And this is one. This is a um, white-headed vulture, I think. Yeah, I think, I can't remember. I was going to remember and I forgot. I did too. Let me think. I don't think this is the white-backed. I think this is the white-headed. But they work with a variety of species of vultures in... Africa. And you can see how big that one is compared to Huge. Corinne. Corinne's the same size as Bria and Bailey. So, and you saw how Ziggy was bouncing around and they were much smaller. There's something funny in that picture. Isn't that cool? So, not just try, not just catching them, but do you see this? Look at this. I'm going to be a little quiet. Look at that little box. Can you see it? Can you guys see that little box? It's a solar powered tracker it's a solar powered tracking device and just because by the by the magic of us i have one Boop. look how little it is it looks so big in your hand but then you look in that picture right? and it's so small that tells you how big that bird is it sure does so they put these solar powered satellite telemetry devices trackers on the vultures to track where they're going because there wasn't a whole lot of work done on them so scientists got together dr kendall corinne one of them said you know what let's find out let's see if we can find out where they're going and maybe why they're going there that also tells us a little bit about population trends how many there are what's happening with population and lo and behold we discovered something really impacting their populations which are poisoning events poisoning events so track trap hold on grab the vulture put a tracking device on it and then let it go let it go let it go dun, 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 dun. <laughs> careful we might have to copyright that oh sorry i mean it's copyright 10 seconds i think yeah. i'm done i think, think i have 10 seconds and then let it go and then using satellites track where they go right population trends what's going on with them and what do you do you get a map you get an upside down map <laughs> this is an example of one this is one vulture's track and that is a lot it's a long way looks a lot along yep those are, we point out the different places it travels. Sure, after I put things up. down. You, you hold them up and I'm going to put the tracker down. You do realize you're asking me to do this without my glasses on. Oh, well, you can just, the, the, 
the countries. Like, it was over countries. Tanzania. Tanzania. There's... And they fly south through Zimbabwe, down to South, Amer south Africa, down here. So they covered, like, whole countries, not just, like, our small states. <laughs> so this is one vulture, and they found out, bigger sample, that there's a nice path, nice pathway of vultures going this way, down into South Africa sometimes. Most of them staying within Tanzania. Look what they're avoiding. They're avoiding the water. They can't, they can't fly over the water. So they found a pathway between the two points of water, back and forth. How cool is that? That's really interesting. Now this is neat. They tracked a really amazing vulture named Swoop. Swoop. And that dispersion, that dispersal, that leaving of your home range, they expect. They tracked one vulture. So it's like, how far can they go? Well, that's a pretty good distance. Swoop actually went from Tanzania all the way down to South Africa and back to Zimbabwe. They don't come back to their home country sometimes. That distance from Tanzania to South Africa, 1,100 miles. How far is that? That's Asheboro to Houston or Asheboro to Minneapolis or Asheboro to Caribou, Maine. What? That's amazing. And just realize we didn't know that before. And through the work that Corinne and a lot of the, her partners are doing, they're finding out these vultures are really going some pretty cool places to leave their homes, not necessarily come back. They're dispersing, dispersing to those locations. So great work at the North Carolina Zoo. She actually got grant from, from Na National Geographic and other locations to do that work. Great job, Corinne. That seems crazy that we're out there looking at that to help those wild populations. Really fascinating work. But why? Who cares? It's yeah, a vulture. I think the biggest thing, takeaway from this is why should people care about vultures in Africa or here? Right. Who cares? It's a vulture. It's eating dead stuff. Do you guys care about vultures? Really? I know I don't want it. I don't want to eat dead stuff on the side of the road. No, it's not the job I want either. Not, not the kind of terrian I want to be. Want <laughs> mine on a grill? So, of, of course, one of their main jobs in the ecosystem, in their habitats, where their homes, is to clean up those dead bodies, to eat that dead and decaying material. They're recycling that energy. Recycling before recycling was a thing. They're recycling that energy, step one. So they're cleaning things up, recycling energy, kind of step one and two. Vultures in North America, vultures in Africa, vultures in Asia, doing the same thing. Same job. Recycle it, clean up, recycle that energy. But get this. I'm going to blow your minds. I don't say this very often, but I know I'm going to blow your minds here. Their stomach acid is so strong it can kill the deadly microbes that are in those dead and decaying bodies such as anthrax huh. come on how vital of a job is that their stomach acid is so strong look at this i have a sheet down here i want to show you where is it here it is this is one of our activities today. Check out this sheet. So this is the pH scale. Going a little chemistry on you. I know, I know, I know. I loved chemistry. My dad's a PhD chemist in organic chemistry. I've always liked chemistry. It was built into my body. Over here on the scale is acid, is highly acid, highly acidic through neutral and then basic or alkaline over here. The vulture's stomach acid is 
Over here in the acid and base scale on the scale on the pH scale. It is so acidic, it can literally destroy the microbes and bacteria in those dead and decaying bodies. So it is literally getting rid of things like anthrax in wild populations in Africa. Anthrax. That's, that's insane. And you and I can, can contract that. You and I can contract anthrax. And so all the other things that their body, able, their body acid is able to get rid of. What about botulism? Gone. Trying to think of all the really horrible Ebola, things. gone. Ebola. Oh, really? Whoa. Ebola, gone. E. coli, gone. Yowzers. If it's present, if it's present, yeah, they can now they're not going to go. Not, they're not going around looking for anthrax. Yeah. Oh, there's some over there. But if it's in the body, but if it's, it's in gone. the decay, if it's in that body, gone. They clean it up. They can clean up, not just the body, not just recycle the energy, but they're able to get rid of the diseases in the body that might have killed the animal. Right? So, really important, huge problem. Unfortunately, they're dying in massive numbers due to poisoning. Due to poisoning. And it's not that they're trying that the people are trying to kill the vulture. Imagine. You're a farmer, and you come and you find one of your cows has been killed by a lion. Makes you mad. It should. That's your livelihood. That's how you're feeding your family. But you're upset, you're angry. And somebody comes along with a, with a big old huge batch of poison and says, if you put this poison on that cow and the lion comes back, it'll kill the lion. Oh, I'm angry, I'm going to do it. So they put poison on the lion. To, they put poison on the cow to kill the lion. Sad. I want you to understand why. They're angry. They've lost part of their, their, their living. But still, there's other ways to do this. Put poison on the cow, lion comes, eats the animal, lion dies. Hyena comes, eats the lion, eats the cow, hyena dies. Jackal, jackal dies. They're not trying to kill those animals, but they're still poisoning all of them. Vultures come in these massive flocks to eat that cow. Or eat the lion or the jackal. Vultures die. In massive numbers, 60, 70, even 100 animals in some of these poisoning events. Well, when scientists, when rangers discovered that, they said, what can we do? How do we work with the villages? How do we work with the villagers in Africa, primarily now, and working into other countries as well, to say there's other ways to deal with this? Well, you start tracking them. You start trying to find where the vultures are. And you identify where some of these poisoning events are, and you go to them and you talk to them. And that's one of the things that the work that Dr. Kendall, Corinne, and her partners are doing now, going into the villages and speaking with those folks, celebrating natural, uh, annual International Vulture Day, which is September 2nd, I think. There's an International Vulture Day to bring awareness to their role in the world. So they're going in, talking to teachers, talking to communities, talking to villages. Guys, they're playing a really important role. And today, people are going, you know, this is cool. We do want to be on, on Team Vulture. To the point where the nickname of the vulture in Africa, in some places of Africa, the nickname of the vulture, love it, the soap of the savanna. They're cleaning it all up. So if you can share that information, share that importance, share that enthusiasm, share that excitement for an animal that doesn't get much love and understand their role and how it impacts you and me, wow. So throughout this week at the North Carolina Zoo, inter uh, virtually, you're going to be learning more about those as we say uh, going through our saving species event here at the North Carolina Zoo. Really cool. On the adventures and education page, 
and I hope you guys have donated. Thank you so much for those of you who have. There are different activities, not a craft this time, but some activities you can do at home. This is your sense of smell. How to smell like a vulture. That might stink. How to use your sense of smell like a vulture, because they do eat dead stuff. And then here's the pH scale. And it's actually like a little science um, yeah. experiment. So this is something you do with your kids at home, How or cool you don't that? need a kid to do it. You can do it with Heck yourself yeah. or a significant other. Love it. Um, this is just this is just a math experiment. This is what I talked about how much they eat, the 25% of their body weight. Not all the time, guys, but when they're gorging, when they're really hungry, they've got a huge thing and they can eat that. And then I love this, this one. This one's my favorite. That's why it's last. You get to make vulture vomit. Vulture vomit, V squared. You get to make it at home and it's so much fun. So make it at home, guys. So you make it at home, you come up with a target, to defeat the enemies of the vulture. And then you're throwing. So you're creating, you're sciencing, and then you're physically doing activities as well. So an amazing stuff put together um, by Nikki and her team about the vultures and some activities you can do at home. Did you enjoy meeting, did you enjoy meeting Ziggy today? I know I did. Anybody else? Did you enjoy meeting Ziggy? I liked watching uh, Bria work, Ziggy. Yeah, and then how about that with a hand closed yeah, on purpose? And, and really learning that that is he's eating, or she yeah. was eating like she would eat out of a carcass. How cool was that to try yeah. to get in there? Because that's what they're doing. They're diving their head into that carcass. Yeah. I didn't, I haven't seen that before. And, I, and with today, it was interesting talking. I was like, oh, that's what they're doing. Yeah, uh, that was my favorite part. And then meeting Bailey and Bria, of course, and Ziggy. It's always nice to meet Ziggy. Uh, and then learning, I hope, about some of the amazing things about vultures. You can identify vultures now here in North Carolina, the two different, the two large species, the turkey vulture and the black vulture. Ziggy was a black vulture. Fingertips spread out, kind of white on the ends. The turkey vulture more white all the way here, and the turkey vulture has that red head. Turkey vulture usually by itself. Black vultures always in those big social groups. And finally, the conservation work that's being done at North Carolina Zoo in Africa and other places in conserving this vital animal in the ecosystem. Cool stuff. Good day. And we will, you know, see you, quote on unquote, Wednesday. on Wednesday. With hellbenders. We'll be answering your questions live. Amazing species. And we're doing some really cool work with them. If you haven't seen it, you come to the zoo, you go, I can't see the hellbender. The habitat is a beautiful habitat, but it's hard to see this, the hellbender. We have up close video for you. So you'll really get to see them. It's so cool to see. Wendy did an amazing job, as you guys know. We did an amazing job getting you up close and personal with the Hellbender. All right, guys. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in to today's zoo adventure. From Wendy behind the camera, Steve in front of the camera, thanks again. We'll see you Wednesday, 10 o'clock, next Monday. Awesome. One of our feline friends. It'll be perfect. Stay safe, guys. Bye.